G'day, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. Today, I'm talking about Tasmanian devils. Tasmanian devils are the world's largest living carnivorous marsupials. The only one bigger than them was the Tasmanian tiger. And sadly, in the early 1900s, that went extinct. It means we need to protect the devil all the more. Our devils are mainly scavengers. They can be predators at times, but if you have a look at their body, they can't run very fast, they've got a really heavy head, and they're designed to scavenge. So what happens is, they've got this really muscular jaw and a big bony head, and those teeth are made for crushing bone. They do that because you think, a devil goes around and it sniffs the air and it's looking for something that's already died, like a small wallaby or a wombat or a kangaroo, which has naturally died. And when they turn up, there's a good chance somebody's already eaten the good bits. So they've evolved and they've developed their bodies to be able to crush through things like ribs, bones, cartilage, and they will eat everything. Devils have some pretty cool features. And we'll start at the nose. It's always wet like a dog. So it's a really good sense of smell. They can clear it out with that wet nose, which means then they can pick up more scent particles. Now, if we move back, have a look at the jaw. Really strong, sharp teeth. Canines and scissor-like teeth in the back that shear off meat. The canines are the big ones in the front like a dog. Now, we move up, they've got sensitive whiskers all over the face. Now, a lot of that is because they're active at night. Sometimes they can't see where they're going. And when they communicate with other devils, they use those whiskers to stay in touch. Uh, we come back, their eyes are quite small. Their eyesight isn't great. But when you live that far off the ground, you don't need the best eyesight because you can't see too far. Ears. They, sometimes they turn bright red. That's how they cool down. So what they do is, when they get hot, their ears pump blood through them. And the cool air comes past. And that blood cools down with the cool air and they circulate it through the body. And it helps them stay cool. Their whole body is mainly black fur, but they have the white stripes and they're individual to each devil. It's interesting because it's still camouflage. It's called disruptive camouflage. I'll give you an example. Lions in Africa are colorblind. They hunt zebras. Now when zebras are black and white, you can imagine a lion's colorblind. It can't pick one zebra out from the other, so they all look the same. It's called disruptive camouflage for devils in the wild at night, even if they were all black fur, it's still easier to see than if they have a white stripe. A white stripe might look like some moonlight or a different tree branch or something like that. Until a couple of thousand years ago, devils were found on mainland Australia, but they disappeared. And their island home of Tasmania is now their last refuge. Now they live basically right throughout Tasmania but they prefer open eucalypt forest, especially where it borders grassland, because that's where their prey is, kangaroos, wombats, wallabies, and paddy melons. Devils breed in February, March, every year. Now, a male will have a territory, and that territory will be a little bit bigger than female territories, but the female territories overlap the male's territory. Now, when they breed, the male actually bites the female on the back of her neck, and she's got a really fatty area there that's made for it. Now he has to show her how strong he is. She wants a strong male. She wants to have the best kids she possibly can. And once they've made it, would you believe it, they're only pregnant for 21 days. All of our mums are pregnant for nine months. 21 days for a devil. And the joeys are born just the size of grains of rice. Now they start to develop. They're pink, they have no eyes, no ears for a while. But as they develop, they get all the features of little devils. And guess where they live? They live in burrows, hollow logs. They'll even use old wombat burrows. And if they don't have a burrow, they can dig their own. But they keep their joey safe in the pouch to start with, and then in the burrow, until they're big enough to naturally disperse, which is about Christmas time. And two months later, mum will breed again. Devils are known as solitary animals. They do come together to communicate, and what they do, it's a bit gross, they all go to the toilet in one spot. It's called a latrine. But by going to the toilet there, each devil comes at a different time. 
and they know who's in town, who lives within my territory, who lives on the outside of my territory. But normally they're solitary. At the end of each day, they sleep alone. They'll come together to feed, they'll come together at their latrine, they might even bump into each other, but they're known as a solitary animal. Devils are facing a major threat and they are endangered. In 1996, there was a disease found in devils. It's called devil facial tumor disease. It's horrible. It grows big lumps on their face. They end up, they can't drink and they can't eat. They always die from it. Now, since 1996 to now, the devil population has decreased by up to 90%. Now you think about that in smaller terms. You've got 10 apples. Take away nine of them, they're all gone. You've got one left. Now with devils, that went from maybe 150,000 devils, and now you've got down somewhere around 10 to 20,000. It's a really scary number. But there are a whole range of organizations fighting to save the devil. And one of them is mine. That's called Aussie Ark, Australian Wildlife Ark. And what we do is we protect devils on mainland Australia. They don't have the disease. We've got about 200. We've bred 400 joeys. And our role is that if the worst case unfolded in Tasmania, worst case is they go extinct. We've got them safe here, disease free on mainland, and we can put them back. And we hope that doesn't happen in the wild, but we need that insurance population. Okay, it's an insurance policy against them going extinct. And we have so many other animals, not just devils, but they happen to be my favorite animal. I love everything about them. And so that want to protect them. And for you guys, as you grow up, there will be different animals that you appreciate, different habitats that you appreciate. Now, I hope that you take interest in one of them or 10 of them or 100 of them and help to protect them. Three bits of homework for today. The first, I'm giving you a hint. It's a bit tricky. Look into it properly. How many joeys can a female devil give birth to? Make sure you look carefully at that. Number two is how long can a Tasmanian devil live for? And number three is to check out my conservation work. Have a look at Aussie Ark on Facebook or wherever you see this. Go and learn about devils. Learn about all the other species. Look through all the videos. Enjoy it. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Uh, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. But this is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.